Nibbana can be mundane, just every day, or it can be super mundane. The cessation of suffering, every time you let go of a hindrance, every time you let go and relax and come back to your object of meditation, that is Nibbana. That is the cessation of suffering. Ni means no more. Bana means fire. So you're putting out the fire every time you let go of one of these hindrances that pulls you away. The analyzing mind, the mind that takes great delight in thinking, is part of restlessness. And even though it might seem pleasurable and real necessary to do, it is a hindrance to your practice because it stops you from seeing what's happening in the present moment and you get caught in your head. You get caught in thinking and trying to figure out how every little thing works. Why is it like that? We don't care why. What we want to do with this practice is see how the process works. How does the delight and how does the restlessness arise? What do you do with that as soon as it arises? Because it's a pleasurable feeling. It's real easy to get sucked into it. And think of all the different little ways about this and how it can be used. But that does not lead to the cessation of suffering. That leads to more suffering. Especially Upandita in Burma, when I would go to a Dhamma talk, he gave interviews to every one of the foreign monks. And there was 20 or 25 of us there. There was a whole bunch of people there. And right before the Dhamma talk, he'd just sit back and kind of laugh and talk about, this really is the Western disease. This analyzing, this trying to figure out how everything works. Too bad it doesn't do anything for you. It just causes you to want to do it more. And this is leading to psychology. The Western psychology is about analyzing. It's about figuring out why. But it doesn't lead to the cessation of suffering. It leads to the continuation of suffering. So we have to let go of trying to analyze how everything works in a particular way. What we want to do is see how it arises. What happens first? I'll give you a clue because I haven't done this before. There's a feeling that arises first. That's near to the start of that hindrance, of all hindrances. They all have a feeling that arises first. But what happens is, and there's more before that, and you'll get to see that too, but what happens is that feeling arises and it's either pleasurable or unpleasurable and then there's some little tiny thoughts little quiet thoughts and then that makes that feeling get a little bigger and the thoughts get a little bigger and the feeling becomes big and the thoughts become big and then you're out a thousand miles away trying to figure out why this is the way it is the only way to get to the cessation of suffering when a hindrance arises is to see its true nature, to see how it arises. And as you become more familiar with the pattern of how it arises, you'll be able to recognize it more quickly. Now, some people have come to me and they said, well, there's some hindrance arises because there's a feeling in the head. There's a feeling before that. You have to look deeper. 
how do you look deeper? Take more interest in how your mind stays on your object of meditation. The more interested you are in that, the quicker you'll see mind start to wobble and go away. And as you become more familiar with that, you'll be able to let it go right then, and your mind will rest on your object of meditation again. It won't turn into this thing that pulls you away and makes your mind think about this and that. So we need to really take more interest in your object of meditation. Now you'll notice every time your interest starts to wane a little bit and get a little bit weak, all of a sudden you get carried away by one of these hindrances and it's painful. It hurts. The only way to let go of this suffering is by seeing it the way it truly is. It's not a personal process. It happens because conditions are right. And what are those conditions? You're losing your attention on staying on your object of meditation. And then you get pulled away. So to be able to experience the Nibbana, once you get pulled away, now you've got some work ahead of you. You've got to roll up your sleeves and get down to it. You have to be able to let it go and relax. What good is all this thinking about anyway? Let it go. Relax the tightness caused by that and the identification with that. Because when you start analyzing, who's analyzing? I am. I have to find out why this is like this. I have to see all of the different ramifications of this. Now that I causes a lot of tightness and tension to arise in your body, especially in your head. So the only way to get to the cessation of suffering is by letting go and relaxing, coming back to your object of meditation. And that cessation of suffering might last for just a short period of time before your mind gets pulled away again. Every time you let go and you relax and come back to your object of meditation, there is a little bit of relief. Letting go of the like of analyzing is not particularly easy because we've been doing it our whole lives. That's what we've been taught to do. But when you start to realize this doesn't lead anywhere really, it doesn't lead to my happiness. It doesn't lead to the cessation of suffering. It only causes more suffering, so I should let it go. And then relax, letting go of that tightness that's caused by the distraction. And then gently redirecting your attention back to your meditation. 